So six years ago, one of my students observed something on an agar plate and went, isn't that interesting? Look at this, there's a hole there, what's happening? And I went, let's find out. Six years later on, we know what the compound is, we know how it works and how it inhibits bacteria, and we know more about the, the bug that produces the compound. The next stage will be three or four years to then start showing that it works in people. My background from uh, 30 years ago was I'm a medical microbiologist, so I worked in pathology labs, and then I sort of jumped from there to university lecturing, and then from lecturing I talked into research. So now I'm a combined researcher and lecturer, and all my research has been on basically on one single organism called Haemophilus influenzae, and the thrust initially was looking at how it could resist antibiotics, and I've been doing that work since about the year 2000 um, and since that time the bugs become more and more drug resistant and harder and harder to treat so the last work in say the last five or six years have been looking at different therapies different ways to treat the organism and not using antibiotics because they're becoming harder and harder to use and the three or four of the most common first-line drugs don't work reliably anymore so one of the ways in which this bug is hard to treat is it can avoid the immune system and it can avoid antibiotics. But on top of that, it forms a biofilm, so a slimy little layer on the surface of either the ear, which is causing ear infection, or on the lungs. And it hides in this slimy little layer and the drugs can't get into the, to the layer and the immune cells can't get into the layer. So it hides there and when the antibiotics go away, or the immune response dampens down again, it comes out of the slime layer to re cause infection. So it causes chronic disease that's often recurrent disease. So if we can apply a substance that will steal the nutrients, it can't grow, and hopefully this thing that we apply to steal nutrients also stops it making biofilm. For research that involves giving a substance to humans, some kind of therapy, you start off with basic science. We've done that, and that's been successful. We've published that, and it's been proven to be successful. And then you want to try and find a way to, to move towards a clinical trial with, a, with humans. So the current prediction from conception of an idea for a new antibiotic to being able to use that in a patient is between 10 and 15 years and in the order of a couple of hundred million dollars. And that's why drug companies are steering away from investing in developing new antibiotics, it's too expensive. So alternate therapies are very attractive. So our approach is to use a probiotic. You know, when I was a really fledgling researcher, the first thing is you go, I want to do this experiment or do this research, I haven't got any money. So way back then, this was in 2000, my first ever grant was for two and a half thousand dollars. And back then, it was a, for me it was a game changer because it gave me some funds to do a few experiments. And from that, I got a publication and then I get a second grant and a third grant and a fourth grant. And over that time, you're building a reputation and building a profile. And then I was able to get bigger grants from people other than Clifford Craig. So, you know, for me personally, and then all my students, it's been absolutely essential for us. It's been so good having local funding to fund local research. And, you know, I look back now and the current student who's running this current project is one of my PhD students from five years ago from a grant that was Clifford Craig funded. So, you know, it's nice to see what we're doing now have a real world implication other than just an experiment and a publication. For a funding body, you want to see not just experiments and publications, you want to see impact in people. You can say, we funded that and look at this outcome for patients.